All right, uh, Jerry Fowler, DNA Continuum. I don't know what year it came out. Sorry, I'm sitting in my car. <laughs> Uh, is um, University of Minneapolis. Myself, Joey Pepper, and our buddy Haven that filmed, we were all supposed to fly to Minneapolis. And then 9-11 happened. We were obviously shook to fly. I remember at the time, Aesthetics paid for us to rent a car, and we just went there. It was like the best week ever. I think I got that. That was the day uh, they had this massive contest at City Hall. That was on Ronson Lambert's board. His trucks are crazy tight. That spot's moved like four times. The city just picks up those bags. I just can't help it be. My relationship with filmers was always the best when they were critical. You know, like, I don't want someone to tell me that something looks good if it doesn't look good. You know? Or like, should I do it again? And I really should. And the person says, no, we got it. You know? Like, Frontside no size are like the hardest trick in the world for me. That was Haven on a cell phone filming. So this spot is awesome. It's in uh, Dallas. This reminds me of Matt McCarl, who passed away. He had a great eye. He just asked me to keep doing backsmiths. He was like up on the up on this roof shooting, you know? And I just kept doing them and it was kind of just led to this line. The spot's kind of random. It was on like a, a roof in Dallas, Minneapolis again. That's uh, Rotterdam. San Juan, Puerto Rico. I broke my ankle right after this. It was a set of three stairs and I wanted to fake you flip down them at the end of that line. Like I always used to land no complies downstairs super hard and I love landing hard, you know? And I just fucking tried to land it crazy hard and got my back flat. I mean, I got to, I got three quarters of a line, but flew back to Boston with a broken ankle. That is Northeastern. Crisis. Minneapolis again. Jeremy Ray told me he did tricks from flat on that. Front side, no side to fakey, I think. I don't know if there is footage. I mean, Jeremy filmed for so much stuff. So who knows? It could be in some random video. Yeah, the back tail was the same day as that stuff. Cost and nose grinding too, right? All those ledges were brand new when Matt found it. And we went there and we're like, this ground is for It's conflicting, like, cobblestone. And they're all, you know, some of them are super smooth. Some of them are raised. And there's letters written on the ground. But the ledges were too good to not stay. And then the manual pad and that big compass in the center with the, like, marble ground. But then the marble ground is surrounded by shitty ground. So yeah, it's definitely, definitely a uh, challenge. I've always loved no complies, even when they weren't cool. Like I just liked doing them and, and I kind of, that was just kind of me messing with it. You been to Copley Square before? It was right behind at the base. You can see the, the footage from the front, you can see. It was just kind of always a hangout spot. That yellow barrier is right next to that. There's like a ton of spots. So we would just always end up at yellow barrier sometimes. It's still, I mean, it's, you can still mess with it, but you can tell it's been driven over. Like, I was happy with, with my part. I was happy with my skating. I wasn't happy with where I was professionally. I wasn't happy with that company. So the people that own DNA, they paid somebody to edit it that nobody knew. Go to his house with all your tricks and you'll bang out your part. And it was like, once we hit like, I forget the amount of time, but it was like once we hit, the, me and Jamal went together. And it was like, bring your music, bring your tapes. And 
personally for me, like every video part that I had ever had, I had not every video part, but like a majority of them, I had sat in the editing room and gone over it with the editor. There was nothing to it. Like it was like, oh, we're just gonna go edit this part and whatever whatever we get in an hour, the guy's gonna clock out and you're gonna leave. So we, we hit whatever he thought was the the end part and I was like, oh, I'm not quite happy with it. And the guy's like, well, time's up. And, um, and me and him had words, which led to me and the guys at DNA having words. And I'm saying like, look, I'm not gonna have this be my part. This guy seems like he has the ability to edit this video, but get it right, you know? So the DNA ended up giving us more money to edit the video, which is funny because people speak to me and Jamal's parts in a positive way. It may have took longer than that guy wanted it to take, but it represented us. You know, you know, every time somebody says like, oh, that part's sick or whatever, like I kind of think of that, you know, because a lot of the guys in that part, you could tell they were all edited by the same person and they were all kind of just, you know, nothing against those parts, but they weren't, they could have been better. I just felt like it was like, you know, fucking starter pack, let's get it fucking done and done. Like put the video out. I don't give a shit how it looks, you know, but Matt Milligan's part was edited by this dude that knew what he was doing. I just wish the people that that were behind the scenes that were, you know, really making the decisions care. You know, honestly, I like this part because it was a lot of travel, a lot of tricks that I'm proud of at a time in my life where I was very open, doing whatever I wanted to do, wherever I wanted to do it, with whoever I wanted to do it with. That's what this part represents to me is like, I don't think about DNA lines as part of this thing. Like I said, there was a lot of just bad blood behind the scenes there. But I was really proud of like, this is obviously my part, but I, I really love being in it with Jamal and kind of just sticking up for ourselves a little, you know?